Hey guys, Lou here. Long time no see, long time no hear. Hope everybody's doing okay out there, navigating the deep and treacherous waters of COVID and, well, do you need a mask, do you don't need a mask, uh, whatever. All right, so, <clears throat> been a long time. Uh, I got a lot going on. I'm moving my house and my shop from Jersey to Florida. Uh, changed casinos three times because I'm not going to be able to play the casinos I was down in Virginia. So, I joined an offshore casino. Um, some people know it as Bovada. Uh, the interface that I'm using is called uh, Bet Us or Bet US, but it's still the same place down in the Caracas. So, uh, just a couple things I want to go over. So, if you play Martingale, um, you've probably had your ass handed to you a number of times. Uh, I have too. So, I had to come up with something that works for me. Now, Fibonacci, D'Alembert, uh, you know, some of those other progressive systems, mm, not really a fan, you know, because... I get stuck in like the sixth or seventh bets and I never come back down and just ends up eating up my bankroll. So here's what I came up with um, as far as my money management. Working on a roll, uh, yeah, working on a low roller salary or bankroll, right? So let's say anything under $1,000. Um, and I might be conservative, so feel free to roast me. Here's what I do. My first bet is $25, right? If I miss, I drop down to 15. If I miss, I drop down to 10. If I miss again, I drop to five. That's the table minimum where I'm at, okay? So that gives me four shots in a row. Now, if I lose all four, that's $55, okay? Now, if I'm martingaling $25, okay, um, we're going to do 50, we're going to do 100, and we're going to do 200. So you're out $375. Now, on a $700 bankroll, that's, well, <clears throat> you know, that, that, that's, that's, you know, half your bankroll, right? Or you could just be out $55. Now, what about winning? Okay, well, we have our initial bet of 25, right? If I win, I'm going to go to 15. I'm up 40. If I lose, guess what? I'm still up 10 bucks, okay? Um, now, if I win that, I'm going to go to 30. Why? Because I was up 40. If I bet 30, I'm still up 10 bucks, Okay. If I win that, I go to 50. Why? Because I was up 70. If I lose that, I'm up still up 20, right? But you win all four, now you're up 120 bucks. And on a $1,000 bankroll to make 120 bucks in one shoe, well, you know what? You just did better than 10% in one shoe. You got these people out there, and I did it myself, you know, the 2% per day bankroll challenge, right? Well, here, you just did 10% in one shoe. That's awesome. Do five shoes a day. Well, first of all, you do five shoes a day. That's $600 for the day, okay? Not only that, um, you know, you do 10% and you, you know, times that times five shoes, guess what? You do the math, all right? So, yes, that's 50%. So that's my money management that I use for me. Now, it takes discipline because you may want to martingale. You may say, ah, you know what, I'm going to get this next one. It doesn't always happen that way. Now, as far as bet selection. So I got a new shoe here, okay? There's only been one decision that's been made, and that's so I could blow off that money on a tie down to a $700 budget uh, bankroll. So what I do, okay, what I've changed myself to doing is I won't bet for the first five or six hands, five or six decisions, okay, because, well, the trend really is your friend in this game, all right? We want to follow what's going on. We don't want to just 
say, you know, bet player until it comes out or, you know, player banker player until it comes out. Because in those cases, you're looking for a one in six and you sort of have to martingale that. Because you have it in your mindset, I have to go these six times. All right. The other reason why is that I like to let the derived roads start to pop up. And there's information in the derived roads. Now, I get that the game is a 50-50. Every hand is 50-50. However, anybody who's played this game for more than, like, I don't know, 38 seconds, we all know that there are certain patterns that come up in every show. Right? You got your singles, you got your twos, you got your threes, and then more than threes. All right? And a number of channels have gone over the math for it. But, you know, the math is 50% of the game is chop. All right? Um... Was fifty percent of the game is chopped. Twenty five percent of it is going to be your twos, and then the other twenty five percent is going to be split up between threes and more than three. And the idea is that the higher something runs, the more those odds increase exponentially that it won't come out again. So let's say you get seven bankers, right? The odds are supposed to be astronomical that you get an eighth banker. However, I've seen it. You've seen it. We've all seen it. We've, we've seen runs go for 14, 13, right? I played a shoe the other night. It chopped 18 times. It was gorgeous, okay? Um, but I like to use the information from the derived roads as a way to help make decisions in where I'm going to bet. So... You know, Cheetos, Cheetos, I got to tell you, his, his system, it works. You know, I've used it. Um, I, I don't have any complaints about it. Can you get burned on it? Yes. But if you play the game right and don't try to play every column, you can probably skirt disaster. You can, you can avoid that disaster of having a six martingale loss. Um... He's smart the way he plays. You know, I like him a lot. Uh, Casino Amigos, you know, he has his trigger for player, player, player on different hands of the game, okay, or different columns of the game. And in simulations, I can't get it to lose. I've looked at it on my um, shoes that I have recorded, and it loses in real life. All right. Um, the Pacologist, what can I say? You know, he, I enjoy his channel. I enjoy him. I think he's a great guy, but it's really hit or miss with him. You know, sometimes he gets all D-Gen and just goes nuts. And other times, you know, he has some, he gets lucky and has some really great wins. So that being said, let me, let me get into my actual uh, bet selection here. So what we have going on here is just six random hands, right? And we all see this. We've all seen this. Now, half of you <laughs> are going to say players coming out. Half of you are going to say bankers coming out. I'm inclined to think that bankers going to come out. All right. However, okay, um, you just never know. Now, the derived road, the uh, the small uh, the uh, the small road. All right is telling me that Banker is going to come out. All right, now, and, oh, just real quick. If you don't know how to read the derived roads, I'm not going to teach you. Go check out Mr. Raphael and go check out Master of Baccarat. They do really, really good explanations on reading the derived roads, okay? So think of it this way. The, um, I'm sorry, the, the, the small road, the one with the red and blue donuts, okay? That looks at what's happened one hand, uh, one column prior. The Big Eye Road looks at two columns prior. And the Cockroach Road, which is the little red slash on the lower right of your screen, shows what's happened three columns in a row. And whether or not the columns match is what produces chaos or predictability. I'm not going to bet here. I'm going to wait and see which way the shoe goes. Okay, so Banker did come out, all right? When we look at the uh, big eye boy, we see we have two blues, two reds. So we have a pattern there, 
okay? Now, we also have a chop starting on the cockroach road, okay? So, if I wanted the next hand to produce a red slash, all right, I would be betting player here. If I want the next hand to produce a blue dot, okay, I'd actually be betting banker here. All right, so you see how that kind of, you know, sometimes they can conflict with each other. Um, and then, of course, looking at the main road, everybody's screaming player. So guess what? I'm going for player. And, of course, we lost. Okay. So we see what's going on with the derived roads. All right. Um, so now I am going to bet player again. And that's because of the information that I see on the derived roads. All right. Now, if I want predictability here, okay, I am going to bet player again, which I don't think is going to come out. So we lost the 25, we bet 15. Guess what? We're only down 10 bucks, right? So you see what I mean about this being a soft landing? So I'm going to come back up to the 25. I'm going to bet player. I know it's not going to come out. Okay, well, actually, it did come out. Yay. All right. Um... So, I'm continuing my chop on the cockroach road. Okay. Um, now, I had a win. I ain't going to do nothing for three hands. That's one. That's two. That's three. Now, the reason why we all know that... Well, I shouldn't say we all know. If you've paid attention to the game, you'll notice that most sets runs in threes. And it could depend on the casino. Like when I was playing with Caesars, their sets ran in fives. You, you could set your watch by it. Especially on, well, with chops, it would stop at four. I mean, it never went past four. Okay. The casino that I'm at, everything seems to go in threes. There's there's rarely any long runs of anything. So I've just kind of gotten my mindset into threes. But we see what's going on on the shoe here. We have some terrible twos going on. I call them terrific twos. Right? Now, because I won my 25 after the 15, I am going to bet $15 again. All right? I'm not going to bet that 25 because then we'll be down even further. See what I'm saying? So we're going to do 15 again on player. Let's do 15. Okay. So there you go. Just goes to prove that, you know, patterns don't always stay the way that they should. Now at this point, i got to make a decision. Player banker. Well, I don't know if Banker's going to come up again. So I'm going to wait a hand until I see a pattern coming out. Okay, we got a 2-1 pattern happening here, right? So I bet my 15, I'm going to drop to 10. Okay, we got that. We're up 10 bucks. Life is good. I'd rather, listen, I'd rather be up 10 than down 100. Follow me? Okay, so we're going to go three hands. One, two, three. Okay, so we have a pattern that's continuing here. Now, I'm going to bet my 25 here on Banker. And there we go. Okay, so we got that. Looking at the derived roads, we got a nice streak going on two of the roads. This pattern just has to keep up, right? But we're not going to bet. We're going to go one, two, three. Okay. So you see that the pattern changed. Everybody would have been putting $1,000 on player to come out when that third banker came out. And lost.
But what we do see happening here, as far as like identifying patterns, patterns, players only go in one time. So I feel confident in putting $15 on Banker. Okay, so a player is finally going to start trying to make a comeback here. Um, I think player would come out again, but let's see what happens. And I'm going to wait one more. Okay, player's going on a little bit of a run. So I'm going to do my 15. Nope. On player. Okay. I'm going to wait again. I'm not going for second banker here. Good thing. I'm going to wait one more. Okay. So I'm going to drop down to 10. All right, we got that. I'm going to wait three. We're going to be patient. Okay, player is definitely on a run here. So... We hit for 10, so we're going to go start working our way back up. And you kind of want to make a, a decision for yourself. Once you're in profit, you don't have to come back up from the 5, 10, 15, back to 25. You can shoot straight to the 25 because you're already in profit. I'm just trying to preserve my profits. Right? So being $15 up already... If I lose my four in a row, well, instead of being down $55, I'm only down 40 See what I'm saying? So I'm just doing this. This is my call. If you decide to use this method, well, you make the call for yourself. Okay. And now I'm going to wait three again. And there you go. The streak just ended. That's one, two, three. Okay, we got a nice chop going on. Derived Road says there's a chop going on. I'm going to put my 25 on player. There we go. Now, I'm, I'm up $53. If I were playing with a $700 bankroll, I would be satisfied with being up $50. Okay, in one shoe. That, that, that ain't bad. You know, that's, that's, that's a really decent dinner someplace. You know what I'm saying? You could do a little better than the dollar menu. All right, but let's just keep going. Let's just keep going and keep testing this, this method. It's not a system. It's just a method. The point is to not get stuck in the mindset of, okay, hey, look, you know, banker, player, player came up. I'm going to start betting you know, whatever, banker, player, player, whatever, okay? You just want to follow the flow of the shoe. Use the derived roads. There's information there. Learn the derived roads. They've saved me a bunch of times, and they've let me down a couple of times, okay? Um, here, why not? I'm going my $15 on banker because we won the 25 right? Okay. <clears throat> I'm actually, I misread the derived roads. Had I read them correctly, I would have bet player there and continued the 2x2 two two that I see going on on the uh, small road. All right. So at this point now, I'm going to go 10 on banker. Oh, I hit the button too many times. Okay, no big deal. We still got it. Okay. So... We have our two by two still continuing, right? On the small road. When you look at the cockroach road, the red and blue slashes, we got a pretty nice chop going on. Now, if I want predictability here, um, I'm going to be betting. I'm going to be betting player. Uh, I'm sorry, banker. So we won the 15. We'll go to the 25. Okay, we lost that. No big deal. We're still up 30 bucks. Okay. 
no big deal. All right, so I'm going to bet player again. Okay, so that didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Um, now I could wait, or I could try to jump on this uh, chop that's going on. And as you can see, no chop has lasted more than three. But I'm a sucker for a good time, so let's... Let's go to player. All right, well, see, that's what I mean about this being a 50-50 game. You just never know. And again, the chop didn't go past three, right? So now I'm going to wait, see what comes up. All right. I'm jumping on Banker here. All right, got that. That's good. I'm going to wait three. All right, again, player's not going past one. So we're in profit. I'm going to say the heck with it. I'm going to go with my $25 bet here. Probably going to go player. Nope. Oh, got that. All right. Go three. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, you should jump on that, you know, those, uh, those runs. Well, I'd like to. The problem is that you never know when it's going to win. And when you're doing an up bet, a lot of people put themselves in a position because they're pressing their bets. Well, they're going to lose all their profits. All right, so here we're going to go 15 on player. And, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. If I had pressed that bet, I would have lost all my profit. Here, I'm still $16 in profit. All right. Um, let's see. I'm going, I'm going player here. Uh -huh. All right, I am going to wait one. Okay. So we got that. We're going to wait three. Coming down to the end of the shoe. And I'm going to go 25 here because, you know, we're going to be getting to the end of the shoe real soon. So, uh, 25 on player. Every time. Okay, let's um, tell you what, let's do 15 on banker. Okay, so we're $5 in profit. And again, coming down to the end of the shoe, so just for illustrative purposes only, I'm going to jump back up to my 25 on player because that's the way the shoe is trending. Okay, we got that. Um, anybody else thinking banker here? I'm thinking banker. We got that. And at $45 profit on a $700 bankroll, to me, that's a win. Like I said, do that five shoes a day, right? You're talking about 200 bucks. That ain't bad. You know, you, whatever you do for a day job, you may not get $200 a day. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to give you a little explanation as to how I've changed my methods, sort of get back into the YouTube game here. Um, and, uh, well, hopefully you guys got something out of this. If you did, eh, drop me a comment. Uh, give me a like, you know, 
share it. Uh, you guys all know how the algorithm works. You know, we all we all benefit, right? So uh, any help you guys give me would be great. Uh, if you didn't enjoy the video, you know what? Leave a comment. I'm completely indifferent to it. It's like they say, you do you. I'll do me. You do you. All right, gang. Until you see you next. Until I see you next time, or you get to hear me next time. Take care. Peace.